Hello everyone. My apologies. This uh, this video is a couple of days late. It's been kind of hard to get work done on the motorhome because we had the forest fires. We talked about that last time. And then we had a bunch of rain. And that's what we'll talk about next time, uh, the rain. But uh, in this week, like I told you, we're going to finish that front end and get that thing working. So I ordered these lights. I got these. Um, these are just some China specials um, from eBay. I don't know how, they're, how good they're going to be, how, how nicely dispersed the, uh, the beam pattern is going to be or anything like that. But the important thing to tell you guys is the white ring here is actually a yellow ring and that is my turn signal. So this is a self-contained unit which is superior to the original lighting solution and it means that I don't need the lower blinker unit uh, on, on the motorhome, that square unit. So because that's redundant, I thought about deleting it and that gives me a chance to be artistic with the front end. So take a look at this uh, picture here. That is a you know, six by six lifted version of this uh, GMC motorhome. But the point is, you can see what they did with the custom headlights. And I really like that look. Um, it's clean, it looks more sleek than the stock look. Although I don't wanna do that plexiglass cover thing. Um, so I came up with this mock-up to see what it would look like if I just deleted and made it all smooth and just sort of recessed this light right here into the frame. Oh my God, this looks so stupid. It just looks so bad. So I'm not gonna do that. And I could certainly iterate my way into a better um, looking solution up there for the front. I, I tried it with some square headlights instead of this round one and it looks a little bit better, um, but it's just, you know, the original designers spent a lot of time getting this motorhome artistically looking pretty good. and. Even though it looks a little dated with those headlight buckets, I'm gonna keep them. And there's a structural um, mechanical reason for that because I can actually use the buckets to accomplish um, something that's, that's needed. So what you're gonna see here in this video is another Jim Bounds trick. Thank you again to Jim Bounds for suggesting this one. And yeah, let's just, uh, without, without giving anything more away, let's jump into the work. All right, down at my local Lays hardware store, I spent $19.98 on four of these little eyelets, a turnbuckle, and four of these little clampy dealies to go onto this eight feet of cabling. You guys remember when I was dealing with the chipmunking here on the side. And so we're still dealing with that same issue, more or less. And that's the fact that the motorhome is settling, kind of down to the front. This whole portion of it is kind of cantilevered off the front of the frame. And so all of this fiberglass and, you know, epoxy, or this should call it sheet molded compound, has kind of slumped over time. And as it's slumped, part of the way that the shape has morphed is this point has been pushed inward. It's kind of flattened out. And in order to sharpen that point up, back to a, a point where um, the grill will fit, you know, because the grill has cracked because of the stresses of that thing flattening out. So we need to get the shape of the motorhome back to where it matches the grill. And in order to do that, we need to pull that side to that side. And that is what the cable's for. All right, once again, digging through my random bin of metal, I was able to come up with this piece of wire. I don't know, this is... From my master's degree, I'm sure we were bending wire like this with a robot, so I must have grabbed a chunk of it and thrown it into my bin that I've been collecting for years. I cut two lengths of that off, kind of polished up the ends a little bit. Now I've got this bag of 10 of these uh, mild steel plates. These are for practicing welding with, and goodness knows I need the practice. But uh, I'm gonna use this plate right here as some stock material to finish out this little uh, thing that I'm fabricating. Pushing my tin snips here to the absolute limit, I was able to cut four of these shapes out of some 16th inch carbon steel. And you can see when they're done being cut, they're a little bit crooked. So I just come over here to my vise. Bob's your uncle. Now what I'm trying to do is weld that little piece of bar to the two plates, just like that, so that the bar has sort of a pressure pad on either end of it. And this ugliness is what I've come up with. You can see I didn't even use any filler rod. I just uh, used the setting for the 16th inch uh, sheet metal here and then held the arc onto this wire until the wire turned molten and fused itself to the sheet metal. So that'll work. You can see I didn't dwell. I didn't hold it over there dwelling 
long enough and after the, while well, it was cooling down, so I got a little rust marks happening. So I'm gonna have to clean those off before I paint it. Terribly ugly, but it'll do the job. Anyway, you can see here, this is my little first, I mean, literally, very first all, first arcs that I ever struck with, uh, with my new machine here on um, some steel. So this is just regular mild steel. So this is what I learned how to do 12 years ago. I have never welded aluminum and oh my God, does it show. These are my first experiments. Like this is, whew, we'll talk about that in another video, but I'm not holding my breath. Probably gonna get it done welded by somebody else here. Um, at least for the hard parts on the on the um, on the skin of the motorhome. Now here on my welder, underneath we can see these little short gloves. These are actually my like oxyacetylene welding gloves. And then there's these. What are these welding sleeves for when you're welding with short sleeve shirts on? And hey, I bought these when I bought the uh, with the welder, uh, or when I bought the uh, the stand for the welder. So. There I was, thinking ahead, knowing that I needed something like this, and then I didn't use them. And this, I don't know if you guys can see it, is the result. So I have sunburned my biceps. <laughs> just doing this, that's just on this, that's, that's all the welding I did, and I sunburned my biceps. So yeah, this, uh, this arc is no joke, and I'm gonna have to be wearing either long sleeves or these goofy things. What do you guys think? Are we gonna see these on the runway in Milan next season? Let me give you guys a slightly better view of that sunburn. It looked a little worse earlier on, but yeah. That's a total of maybe 10 minutes of exposure from the arc. So yeah, there's a lot of, uh, of ultraviolet or infrared. I don't know, one of those being spit off of that torch. So crazy stuff. All right, so you can see I've got this loop assembled and I've taped this off and given it a really thick coat of clear spray paint just to keep the rust off. Here it is without the tape and that's ready to install on the motorhome. And in order to do that, I'm gonna to need to drill a hole in the SMC fiberglass that is the width of that piece right there, which is also pretty much exactly the same width as across the bolts there. Now I could theoretically cut these bolts down um, and that would still work, but if I ever took this apart, I wouldn't be able to get it back together. You really need all those threads to help you cinch down this uh, this U-bolt thing. So yeah, that's um, it's about three quarters of an inch, I would say which means that I'm gonna be busting out the uh, step twist drill bit that I've never used before. Well, I drilled this test hole in this piece of scrap wood just to see if I could get the, um, the U joint thingamajigger through the hole and I can just barely get it through that hole. So that's the smallest possible hole I can drill. And I've marked that with tape here on my drill bit. So now is the time to come over here and that little black mark is where I'm gonna to try to drill. So there's the apparatus on this side, and this is the side that I fed it through, like some, like a needle, so the, pulled it through the eye there, and this um, U-bolt was just able to fit through that size of hole. What's this for? It's for water skiing, Dax. So you can hold onto it really hard, and Dad, I can put the motorhome in reverse, and right. you can ride a skateboard and get towed behind the motorhome. <laughs> or, I should say, get towed in front of the motorhome. What do you think? Good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, is your mind blown? <laughs> I will bust a new hold on to fix on my cable. Okay, you drive the bus then and I'll hold on to it. Okay, then I'm going to... Are you going to go in there and drive the bus? I'm holding on, you going to go drive? Yes. Are you driving? Come on, my dad! Woo-hoo! See, I'm going to push right here and you can see what happens, the movement right there and then up there at the tip. So by cinching this up, we're pulling both sides together, which causes this to push back out. So you can see I've got this all together. It's at the very stretched limits, which is where you want it for first installation because this is floppy. So hopefully I will have enough slack that I can uptake there in the turnbuckle. And you know, I can tell that I ordered too much cable. I would have been fine with just six feet of cabling and I could have accomplished this. So let's get this tightened down and see if it brings the, uh, you know, the front end back into its original shape. I got this burly wire cutter. I bought this to uh, cut the thick cabling that I'm gonna need to use uh, for the solar panels. That's a uh, copper cabling though. And it is, it is working though on the steel cable. It does, it does do the job better than anything else I have. 
That's pretty cool actually, really clean. All right, so the next thing to do is to fix the plastic of the grill and those sort of insets here, the sconces, I don't know what to call those. Um, yeah, so we'll have to do that next time because this video is already kind of stretched on long enough. Thankfully, you guys don't have to wait that long because Sunday will be here before you know it. It's just a couple of days away. Now, I wanna give a big thank you to um, my friend Jason, my internet friend Jason, for suggesting this um, upgrade. And then an another big thank you to Jim Bounds who gave me the details on it so that I was able uh, to, to accomplish this build. Um, yeah, looking at this front end, there's a couple of questions. Biggest of which is, should I replace the windshield before or after I get it painted? I really don't know uh, what to do there. So I'm lucky in the fact that the windshield repair place for motorhomes that has this glass in stock is only a two hour drive from my house. So it's down in Coburg, Oregon, and I can drive down there and get that done. So what do you guys think? Should I do it before or after paint? But the other question that I'm facing is, do I paint this thing here in, in my driveway? Or do I take it to the professional and pay a lot more? Do I repair those bushings underneath myself here in the driveway? Or do I take it to the professional uh, who's gonna get it done in about one quarter of the time? But again, I'll pay a lot more. I think that in the interest of just moving the project along and getting it done, uh, we're gonna want to uh, do that. Yeah, yeah. Here, come here, come say goodbye to the people. Dada, Dada, come look. I, I can't whistle, Dada. Show me. Pretty okay. close. Almost a whistle. Hey, say, see you next time. See you next time. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get it done next time. Thanks for watching. Good night. I'm going to go.